Okay, I see that it is time. I think it's about 2.30. Um, we're going to go ahead and begin. And as we are waiting for other people to join us, if you have crayons or markers, colored pencils, uh, pen or pencil, any of those available, um, if you could also paper. I put a link in the chat to the handouts. If you would like to have access or view those as we go through today, you're welcome to do that too. Regular plain paper works also. Welcome to everybody. All right, as other people join us, we will be happy to welcome them to welcome everybody today for what's your name, what's your story? My name is Ekua Moses and I am a currently a K through five STEM teacher. I will be letting you know about another um, opportunity that I had in the past in family engagement during the workshop today. Also joining me today, I've invited my dad to co-participate and co-lead with me. He is an important part of our story. So dad, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yes, my name is Abiyo Mens the third, and I'm original from Ghana, West Africa. I've been in America for 50 years now, and I just retired as an instructor from uh, University of Central Missouri in uh, Warrensburg, Missouri, and uh, it was fun, really working with young people, community, and all, and I'm glad that the core has invited me to join her, plus also her work is very, very exciting for us because we have lots of resources and she's been able to put some of that together in a book form. So thanks to Miss Moses. <laughs> well, thank you everybody. Thank you, Dad, for joining us today for our session. We wanna kick things off today by starting with a question. How would you answer this? What's in a name? So you can, in the chat, if you would put your ideas, what's in a name? How would you answer that? This is cute little Vanessa in a, the school district I work here in Las Vegas, Nevada, fifth largest school district. I met her um, at a preschool workshop. So feel free, what would you say? What's in a name? How would you answer that question? your identity, it's who you are, yes. Okay. Great, would you like to join in the conversation, Dad? Uh -huh. It's very, very important watching the name. It just asks ourselves the bottom question is, why do we have names at all? Why do we have names at all? And you may meet somebody who may even have the same name as you have. And so what will make a difference is the distinctiveness, the uniqueness of who you are that you bring to the uh, story. A name, if you look at some cultures, it's very, very important that you name a child because a name can have geography, it can have history, it can have culture, and help people to identify that if you mention your name, some people will straight away know where you are coming from and who you are a little bit. So a name is very, very important, and a good name is to be chosen, and you are the story behind the name. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it so much. So speaking of, today, during today's workshop, if you have some paper with you um, in your corner, some markers, some pencils, crayons, whatever you have, I want to give you this opportunity to kind of doodle as we work through this workshop today. Here's an example on the left-hand side. My mother, um, this is how she expressed her name. Um, the artist known as Carolyn Caulfield Mintz, my mom, um, she passed away, unfortunately, in 2017, but this is a, a cherished piece that we have. 
On the right hand side, you can see some table tents created by some different workshop participants in my family engagement community. Feel free on your paper in your home um, to share. Uh, it could be you can do a sticker, you can do a table tent, a poster. If you're techie and want to do a di digital image, you're welcome to do that too. Um, and at the end of today's workshop, we will close by allowing you time to share your name, your story, what connects with you from this workshop today. Um, we're happy that each one of you are here with us and each one of your names are definitely special and unique. So we can't wait to see what you come up with. I did put in the chat a link to the handouts for those of you just joining us, if you would like to be able to view those as well. So as we're getting started, I want to tell you a little journey to um, my story, how I got to where I am, and um, a little bit more about who I am. So in 2000, I was in college at the University of Central Missouri, where my dad and my mother worked, and I was doing elementary and early childhood education. And during that course of study, I was reading a lot of children's literature and obviously putting lots of lessons together. And I said, you know, it would be really great if there was a story out there that I could relate to on a personal level. There wasn't many stories available about Ghana or about our culture, our heritage or anything like that. So I put together what you see on the screen. It was really basic because obviously technology was, wasn't um, where it is today. But I did the best I could to scan and cut and paste. I know this is a little bit hard to see because of the background, but I, I put that together. And uh, unfortunately, the book was rejected by every single publisher that I sent it to. So I got discouraged. I put that book on the shelf and I started my professional career. And I said, OK, obviously, that's not for me. So fast forward to 2014. After years of teaching second grade, fifth grade, I was a literacy specialist, I was an instructional coach. I started a new position in family engagement in 2014. And one of my workshops that I did, I traveled to 360 different schools doing workshops for families on ways to, um, one of them was ways to raise a reader. Uh, so I gave parents ideas on who the child could read to, what they could read, when they could read, and all these different things to help reading, make reading a part of their life. Uh, you can find uh, this three-part video series on YouTube, 100 Ways to Raise a Reader, um, uh, if you would like more information about that. But one of the things I shared in that workshop with families is that 90% of educators agree that students would be more enthusiastic readers if they had access to books with characters stories and images that reflect their lives. If you think about what we know, anytime someone picks up a book, they're looking for what's in it for me. If they can't answer that question, then it's very hard to connect with that story. And a challenge as educators, as parents, as community people is helping kids find books that they connect with. Fortunately, in this day and age that we're living now, the publishing world is catching on to that. And there's a lot of beautifully illustrated books on the market for kids to be able to have what Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop calls mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. This is one of my absolute favorite quotes. And I use this image that you can see on the screen um, in my book because um, I wanted people to see the book as a window. Books are sometimes windows, offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. When lighting conditions are just right, however, a window can also be a mirror. Literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. And so that's why connecting books to readers is a challenge, but it's also a wonderful way to connect with somebody who's going through something um, helping them to find where they fit, their identity, letting them know all of those things. Another workshop that I do is a writing workshop. And I'm guided by the thought of um, Toni Morrison, successful author, who says, you know what, all those things I just said about connecting to reading and connecting books. If you can't find something that you connect with on the market, as she says, if there's a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. So in this workshop that you can see, I encourage families to make handmade books, homemade books 
with their kids starting at the earliest ages and doing that together, whether it's with simple construction paper, whether it's with art, however you choose to do it, but create books together that teach early concepts, teach concepts about who you are, where you're from, um, different concepts in nature, in your world, all those things our kids need to learn from, they can learn at home, because we don't have to rely on school to do everything for us. We as families can do things with our child too. And these are precious memories. As you see that picture of me at the bottom screen, bottom of your screen, I'm holding this book here called Mabuku, and that is my first book. And I share with them that these books that you make can be treasured items for you later. As I was telling you before, my mom passed away in 2017. And as I hold this first book that she created for me, it means so much more to me now um, than it ever did in life because I can see how hard she worked, how hard she tried with my dad to make sure that I knew where dad's family was from and that we learned um, the Fanti language that my dad and his family and our culture speaks. And so we did this and I encourage families to do that. I also said in the older workshop for families with older children, I shared the book by Eileen Spinelli. And Eileen Spinelli has a great quote in there that says, I think the best story is the one that comes from the heart, your own heart. So in that workshop, I asked families to do with me a heart map. And you can see the heart map here. I give them an actual doily. And in the center of the doily, I say, write what's closest to you. What's the most important thing to your heart? And then around it, I want you to put the other things that are in your heart as well. And as you can see, barely I know, um, you'll see some people wrote their, their family. They drew pictures of their kids. They drew pictures of their favorite foods. Uh, maybe their country of origin that they came from. Everyone's heart map is going to look different. Everyone's heart map is unique. And then I tell them when you're going to write, zoom in on just one of those things on the heart map that you could write for days about, that you could be descriptive about, what you enjoy, what you love the most. That's going to make your writing richer and fuller and so exciting for readers to read. Um, sometimes kids are really struggling to find what should I write about? I have to write another paper. I don't know what to write about. And so we want to encourage them, write what's closest to you. What's what makes you you? What makes you unique? What do you do that no one else does? A great example of um, a, a way to do this in your home is something that Stephen King says. If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. So if you can see the bottom right hand photo here, this is actual books from my actual home library. I like to have all kinds of different books from chapter books to picture books to magazines, everything that I can so that my kids have access to stories. Because again, access and choice are critical to raising readers. Some of the books that are on my shelf that I have read a lot, and I again, in the chat, you'll find a list of these books here. These are books about people who have shared their story, their name, their family, their culture. And I hope you'll take a look at these. These are some of the books from my shelf and um, books in other languages as well. So happy to share that with you. The other thing on the screen you'll see are my actual writing notebooks and some of my favorite pens. I like to have pens and paper with me all the time to write down my ideas, my connections, my thoughts. And then I'm going to take those and I'm gonna turn those into writing or however that I can choose to share it. Plus it's a great reflection tool as well. Um, a way writing is cathartic. It's a way of really helping you process some of your thoughts and feelings. One of my absolute favorite books on my bookshelf that I have shared with kids, as you can see in the top right hand photo there, with families across the district is Alma. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela. And it's a long, beautiful name about it, uh, Alma and how she in a interacts with her father and asks her father questions about her name and how she got her name. And I just love sharing that story. And I particularly shared that story with our preschool families because in our district, um, Spanish is the top language spoken by the students in our district. And so I wanted to find a book 
that hopefully would connect with a lot of the participants that come to our workshops. And I thought Alma's story is just fantastic. So on one particular occasion, you can see the mother and child in the bottom of your screen there on the left. I was reading the book and I just wanna share this page with you from the book. Huda was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors are always with us, watching over us. When you were born, she tied a red string around your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. And if you look, the mom literally stopped me on that page during the workshop and she said, we have that red string too. And if you can see on her wrist by her watch right there is that red string. And her son, if you can see his hand too, had the red string on as well. Instant connection. I thought, yay, I was so excited. I was so happy that this family, this was a connection for them that day. They didn't have any idea that this was in the book. This, they didn't know that's what they were gonna hear at the workshop that day, but we were able to connect a book with a reader and they were so excited. Um, at another workshop, this other family that you see, I had a little Sophia in the group. Sophia and her mom came to participate in the workshop and she was so excited when she heard Sophia in the story and she's like, that's my name, that's my name. And they were so happy and excited and I was happy to share with them. And this is them making a little name bracelet for Sophia. All of those little things. I like how um, Juana Martinez Neal um, ended the story by saying, what is the story of your name? What story would you like to tell? And I can't tell you how many times I've read this story and it just truly hit home to me. Um, I thought, I do have a story. I've been telling families about this stuff. I need to do this. So fast forward to 2020, I picked that story up that I originally wrote in 2000. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna reinvent it. I'm gonna change it. If I've learned nothing in this pandemic, it's that life, which you see in that, um, carving there. Egg represents life. Life is precious. At any time, you know, this pandemic has taught us life can go at any time. We need to make each moment count. So I, like many people, were at home um, and I had time. And I said, you know what? The, the road show that I was doing came to a, an abrupt halt. Um, I'm not able to go to schools anymore. I have this time. And as we're figuring out how to move everything virtual, I'm going to work on that book. Um, so I redid the book. I uh, The tools now that are available helped me out so much. And I also had time with my dad that is here with me today. I had time with him to, to work together to put something together. So what we came up with is my name is an address. And um, a lot of the things, all the things that you will see in here were either painted or drawn by my mother, or they are artifacts from my father. And so I was able to put this together in a story and I wanna share it with you today. I'm not going to read the whole book to you because we don't have time for that, but I hope um, you will consider checking it out so you can see the parts that you missed today. So A is for address. I am American, but people are confused when they see my name written or hear it spoken. Where's your name from? Some ask. My name leads to the continent of Africa. B is for born. My father was born in Cape Coast, Ghana. He lived in a two-story compound house. It is in a busy neighborhood called Kwanapak. Our extended family still lives there. Generations of family pictures are hung high on the wall. And again, that's my real grandparents there painted by my mom. That's a real photo of the house and neighborhood where the family is from. Skipping ahead. D is for distinct. Mama and Papa gave me a name that is distinct from the names of most people. I am thankful they decided to follow a cultural tradition. It is a name that is common in Papa's country. E is for examples. Ekua is my first name and leads to my ancestors' country. My middle name, Ruth, leads to my Christian religion. I have cousins with the same first name, but their parents chose a more traditional Fonte spelling, E-K-U-A or Ekua. My grandfather suggested the spelling of my name. 
And that is truly my real sticker book. Um, I have that here today. And this sticker book, again, is another precious thing that I hold on to. And it's a reminder that my mother and father knew that my name is not one that you're going to see on those personalized keychains and products at the store. So my mom was very intentional about doing art and illustrations for me with my name. So I could see my name um, represented too on different products. Even my birthday um, poster that was hung in the house for the party. Absolutely. Skipping ahead. H is for hope. My father is the oldest of nine children. He left Ghana with the national track team to train in America. He hoped to get a higher education and run in the Olympics. Dad met my African-American mother in college. They had so much hope for their, uh, they had so much hope for their family and made faith, love and giving a priority in our daily lives. And that's really dad's um, pass to the all African games. I is for identity. My identity was shaped by my parents' actions their engagement with family and community gave me the answers to my questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where do I belong? How can I make a difference in the world? J is for joy. Tremendous joy filled my heart when my dad would visit my school. He played traditional instruments and taught classic games. We passed around cultural artifacts. The students asked questions about my name and how my family left Ghana. They asked my dad to describe life in his country. K is for kind. Children teased me and called me Hakuna Matata. Their singing and laughing made me feel like I did not fit in. I felt lonely, embarrassed, and ashamed of my name. My parents talked to me and helped boost my confidence. They told me to be kind and remember our family values. L is for legacy. In the evening, Mama and I would paint and craft pictures together. Adding fabric helped the art look more authentically African. She showed me how to learn from my mistakes and be a creative teacher. Her art is a piece of a colorful legacy. M is for meals. My name is also from a rich cooking culture. Foods are made to bring families together. Ghana is famous for fufu, Jollof rice, fried plantains, meat stews, and spicy sauces. We make these dishes in America, but it is sometimes hard to find foods, spices, and tools to make the exact mouth-watering meals. N is for name. Teachers always mispronounce my name and ask if I had a nickname. I told them I did not and politely taught them how to say my name. I would gracefully correct them when they practice the pronunciation. I like my name. It is me. I do not want my name changed or erased. P is for people. I am linked to the past, present, and future stories of Ghana. My name and actions represent the country and its people, like a travel commercial or mobile billboard. Q is for questions. My parents knew I would have a lot of questions. Mom created homemade books for me to learn about Ghana. The pages included the English and Bunty language. We read those books together over and over. I still ask questions and try to learn more about our language, history, and culture each day. P is for treasure. Mama and Papa taught us to value the art of Ghana. We have unique handmade gifts uh, artifacts from our visit. The decorations in my home point to an address just like my name does. W is for Y. Ekua identifies the day of the week I was born and my gender. I am a girl born on Wednesday. Babies born on Wednesday are the famous and fearless ones. Ask Kleku and Nancy the Spider. And if you visit my website, you can enter the, your birth date um, in here, and it will tell you um, your icon name. Z is for zest. Grandpa is 102 years old. And I'm actually going to correct this because after publication, Grandpa is now 103 years old and lives life with zest. 
He likes to crack a witty joke, give a loving smile, or unexpectedly sing an inspirational tune. I am proud to represent him, my family, the country of Ghana, and the African ancestors who paved the way for me. My name is an address. What is your address? So again, that was just an excerpt of the book. Um, you can see the other letters and things that I included in the book. Um, the book is available from Amazon Canada or other places that books are sold. So, or the library. I wanna ask, after sharing what I've shared so far, and I would like for you to use the chat, what is identity? What does that mean when we talk about our identity or our child's identity? Please use the chat to tell me what you think. It's an important part of all of us, but what is it? Okay, sense of belonging. Absolutely. Thank you, Kayla. And while others are thinking, Dad, would you like to join the conversation? Yes, what's identity? Identity is very, very important. And it's, as you see, the answer is very complex. And many places we go to, they will ask you, show your ID, to show that you are who you say you are. And the question that comes is, who am I? Who am I? And the way you answer that question can make a whole lot of difference in the way you live. So uh, sociologically, psychologically, emotionally, all of the above, to be able to see that I am who I am. I'm proud of it. I know my history. I know my origin. I know my people. And accepting who you are to walk in your purpose and to let the world know that, hey, I am somebody. I am who I am and be comfortable in the skin you walk in. And that's very, very important part of who we are as your identity is very, very important. Absolutely. So if it's so important, what are some ways that we as parents can affirm identity in our children? So now that we know what it is, what are some things? We shared some ideas from our family, but maybe I'm wondering, do you have other things that you do in your family? Feel free to put those in the chat. What are some ways we can help our kids know their identity and who they are? How can we support them with that? What ideas do you have? Feel free to put those in the chat. Every family is definitely unique and every family is different. Um, so what are some things maybe you're doing in your own home or family? Or would suggest? Feel free to put those in the chat. And dad, did you have any other ideas you wanted to contribute? Yes, as parents, how we affirm identity of our children, very, very important is the celebrations like birthday, mm -hmm. achievement at school, and all kinds of things that the kid will be involved in. Mm -hmm. You will be one that will help affirm. You listen to your children, you ask questions, let them ask questions, tell them the story. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, you got to be very, very comfortable in your skin. You don't want to be confused because a confused parent can raise confused children. So if you are firm in your 
uh, identity and affirm that in your children, they will grow up with a sense of pride, sense of victory. They appreciate their uniqueness and willingness to go out and make a difference in the world that we live in. Excellent. Thank you, Dad. And I think the people in the chat agree with you. Thank you for contributing to the chat about telling stories and listening to each other. Absolutely. Those religious events, um, traditions and gatherings. Absolutely. All of those are fantastic. And we need those for sure to help our children and affirm who they have, who they are. Now, I wanted to help you um, kind of walk you through the process I did in planning my story, because all of us have a story. Even if you don't see yourself as a writer, everyone has a story and everybody can communicate it in a different way. Um, if you have a piece of paper or notebook paper, or if you printed out the handout, um, I put all the letters from A to Z on the left hand side of the paper. So if you could do that for me on your own paper, write each letter out. This is our organizational tool. And I wrote the book intentionally in an A to Z format because I wanted to show how wide and deep names can go. It's more than just saying, my name is whatever. Names have a lot of meaning. They have history, language, culture, migration. They have a lot to them. And I wanted to show them that. I wanted to explain that through the book. So I want to uh, walk you through um, how I kind of organized my writing. So if you have a piece of paper, Again, um, we're going to use a three column chart here. So you'll have the letters here. And then we're going to try and come up with a word for each of those letters. And then we won't have time during the workshop. But just so you know, you can then go back and describe those letters or those words that you chose for each of the letters. So in, your, uh, in the link that I gave you in the chat, and I can put that there again, there's another handout that has all of the questions that you will be able to answer by reading either my book or some of the other books that I put on the book list. And I'll put that in the chat for you one more time. Um, so as with your A to Z, I want you to pick the letter. What is your name? Find the letter that represents your name. So maybe O for Omar or M for Melissa or K for Kayla, B for Ben. Find that letter and put your name there. And then do you have a nickname? As I told you in the book, I don't have a nickname. We did try that for a brief second in my life and then we stopped because that just wasn't working. And quite frankly, I like my name and I didn't want to change. So I just stuck with that. Maybe you have a nickname or, or a name that people in your circle, your family um, call you by that you like or want to share with others. Who gave you your name? Was it your mom, your grandma, your auntie? Was it a friend of the family? How, who gave your name? How did you um, get the name that you have? So put that person's name on one of your letters, if you could. Where does your name originally come from? So for mine, it was G for Ghana. Think about your name. Maybe it has a country of origin, or maybe it doesn't. Now, some of these questions that I'm showing up here, there are children and families and students who have a very difficult time answering these questions. Maybe they don't know the meaning of their name. Do you? If so, write it on your letter. Dad, what do you share with students who in your classes aren't able to answer these questions? First of all, it's very, very important and it's sometimes sad commentary for a student or a child or somebody to say, I don't like my name. That's a very heavy load to carry. If possible, it can be changed. But if not, you use the name you have you've been given and try to learn, ask questions, look it up and whatever that will help you to be able to authenticate the name you carry or help you also in your self-identity. And if not, you come up with a story of your own and nobody can challenge you with that story unless you bring in historical facts or geographical facts are not, that are not correct, but you try to coin your own story and be able to pass that story along in a family tradition to be able to pass on future generations to come and to know the story 
and we pass on from generation to generation. It's very, very important to write some of that down, to tell, tell some of the stories. And you don't have to write a book, but at least there is that family tradition and uh, appreciation of who you are as a family. Absolutely. What are those positive things? Own your story. What's the positive things about you or your name that no one can forget? Own those things. Love yourself. Share those things. Um, what are some interesting people and events in your family history? So find some letters there um, that maybe that fits to or applies to. I put A is for address because I wanted people to know that Africa is not a country, it's a continent. And each country is definitely unique and different. And I'm specifically from Ghana and that's what I can speak about. And so I shared that with my story, but maybe for you, it's something different. What is interesting about your history? We've heard about people who have migrated or people who are refugees. People have all kinds of different stories in their family that they can cherish. As I, in 2000 and again in 2020, I worked very closely with my dad and relatives on researching our family history. Dad, would you like to give some ideas about this? Okay, researching family history is very important that if you take it seriously, you may even have, well, whatever, some rich ancestors, some notorious ancestors that may have sometimes to know why we behave the way we behave. And it's important you can speak to family members, aunts, uncles, relatives, to help you find the origin or your authentic self. You can also go to the library, find books nowadays online, you will find that. And especially if you ever meet somebody with the same last name or even first name as you are, you can talk together and that helps to make the world a better place. It's important, very, very important to research that and have that family tradition and pass that on from generation to generation. Absolutely. And like I said, I learned a lot from my dad and also my uncles. I, the, we read a book club together. Actually, we started a book club in, during the pandemic and we got online, my dad and uncles and uh, my cousins who are also first or second generation cousins here in America, wanting to learn more from our parents about um, where we're from in Ghana because obviously we weren't born there and we want to know more so we took that opportunity meeting weekly to do that and so that also inspired me to write this story too. Um, the other thing I would say <clears throat> is illustrate your story have fun with it be creative. Uh, I chose the picture book story format on purpose because I wanted people to be actual actually able to see an authentic family in real time, a nonfiction story that's really true. Um, so people could relate with our family, maybe learn from our family, grow with our family. So I did use pictures and souvenirs and things from our life, paintings, drawings and sketches from my mom. Maybe you have that in your family too. Maybe you have an artist or maybe you like to craft or do hobbies that you could use to help share your story because everyone is unique. Our hobbies are all different. Things that we do in our, our family time, our travels make us all unique and our story so special and so rich. So you can choose a format that works for you. I chose again, the picture book story format, but maybe you would prefer like a novel. There are people who write novels about, you know, biographies and autobiographies of their life um, or other people's life. And you want to share those. You can also magazine articles or blogs, or maybe you're a YouTuber. Uh, I learned a lot about Ghana and current life in Ghana from people in YouTube. I've traveled to Ghana, obviously, many times, but with the pandemic, obviously, I can't travel right now to learn or, or uh, I'm not able to. But um, there are lots of people who are sharing real life things that we can learn about history and culture and places um, maybe our ancestry is from through those. Also, I'd encourage you to look for writing contests for um, 
your kids. Um, there's lots of contests out there. Um, many kids don't believe that they can write, but contests are a great way to say, yes, you can. I believe in you. I want you to go ahead and enter. Even if you don't win, you won in a different way from the research that you gathered and growing as a writer. So definitely give it a shot. The world needs your story, however you choose to tell it. The other thing I would absolutely encourage you to do is as you're seeing people that you relate to their books or, or the different ways that they're sharing, please let that person know. And also let the industry know as well. So let your libraries know what kind of books that you wanna see or if, you don't see a book in your library, suggest it so that they will purchase a copy um, so other families in your community have access. If there's a book like Alma that you really relate to or my book or anyone else's book, give that book as a gift to other people. Say, you know what? I've read this fantastic book. I think that you might be able to relate with it too. Happy birthday to you or congratulations, graduation gift, something like that. Also, if there are authors like Juana Martinez Neal, for example, you want to follow, follow them on social media too, because that's another way of letting authors know that you appreciate their stories and you want to hear more from them. Another thing that's underestimated, and I learned a lot in this publishing process, is how important brief written reviews with booksellers are, especially like Amazon, Amazon Canada, um, wherever you choose to get books please put a review for your for those authors because it lets um, booksellers like Amazon and even your indie bookstores, um, let them know what you wanna see because publishers only want to print what sells. So if people aren't going for these unique stories that are similar to your life experience, they won't keep publishing them. So we wanna keep that going. I received a, a, a Amazon review from Dr. Debbie Peshaw, if you know her, from the University of Saskatchewan, um, she wrote a wonderful um, review of my book, and I'm so very thankful. I have learned from her so much over the years in family engagement, and um, I really appreciate this review that she left for me, you can see here on the screen. I like how she ended it by saying it's an opening to explore each child and family's home culture, whatever it may be. So hopefully throughout those letters in the alphabet, you can find something in there that your family or students in your community could also relate to as well. In my focus group stage before the book came out, one of my reviewers was uh, Nancy Andevine Sands. She's a family engagement consultant in Toronto. Um, and I'm so thankful for her and the valuable feedback that she gave me as I was putting the book together. And this is the um, what she said about my story. Recently, I think it was about a month or two ago, my dad and I uh, recorded a podcast with her. It's available on Apple Podcasts or you can listen on Spotify. I also have that link um, in the chat. Um, you can go back to my website. I have a, a, a link to that recording there that you can see. So again, I'm very thankful for the feedback that I received. So at this point, what I would like to do is open the floor. We're a small group, but if you don't mind to use the, the, um, the audience participation tools, I don't, the hands up is a little bit difficult to find, but you can put some kind of signal up or let me know in the chat. Feel free if you would like to share your illustration, your visual representation or your name, or if you have a question or something that you connected to in this workshop or you have some other feedback, we wanna open the floor so that way we can all hear um, different perspectives and learn from you as well. Again, thank you so much for coming. This again is my mom's illustration of her name and how she visually represented. But if you would like to share yours or a story or a connection, we'll open the floor now. Feel free if you want to, you can use the chat if you would like, or if you would like to raise your hand, or you can unmute. If you would like to turn on your camera, you're welcome to do that too.
Well, while you're thinking and processing, Dad, did you have other comments you would like to add today? Yes, we are very, very excited that you decided to participate this afternoon. And once again, it's very, very important, critical for us as a society. We are being polarized all over the place. And especially the dominant culture will like you to suppress who you are. And that's not good that if you walk and you're not feeling accepted, you don't feel you belong, you feel alienated, it can cause all kinds of uh, issues. But it's very important to realize that you do not want your ignorance be the source of someone else's pain. And as you read books of other cultures, other people, you do that, you are bridging the gap. And from your own home, from your own classroom, you try to raise up young people who will value other people, respect other people, and people, your own story is very, very important. It's unique to you and be proud of your story. Tell the story, keep it, pass it on from generation to generation. And in a small way, you are making this world a better place. So thank you very much for participating. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, excellent, Kayla, thank you. Excellent. Does anybody have anything else they would like to share or feel free to, you can turn your camera on or unmute or type it in the chat if you would like to. We're here for questions or comments. Oh, she did her name, yes. All right, Ms. Kayla, tell us about what you did. There you are. There's a meet. Oh, we can hear you, Ms. Kayla, if you wanted to speak. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So basically what I did is I just printed my name horizontally, kind of like a, like a tree branch. And then I created branches on the side and just listed off um, on the left-hand side, you know, I was a, first I was a daughter, then a granddaughter, a niece, um, a cousin, a sister. And then on the right-hand side, I listed my relationship to other people over time as I became, you know, an adult or whatnot. And I've left other branches on the tree blank. So as I become more involved with other people and connect with other people, I can continue to add what my relationship and what my name would mean to those people. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is Awesome. I like the, the metaphor of the tree because definitely so, right? We're always planting seeds in the lives of other people and definitely we are all branches too. Uh, those different roles that we play in different people's lives and how we, we definitely touch people's lives too. So I think that was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to add or maybe share what you came up with or maybe something about your own name or family connections to anything we talked about today? Well, no pressure. We definitely don't want you to, to have to feel like, oh, thank you very much for that feedback. I appreciate it. Phil, you definitely don't have to feel um, obligated to speak today, but we're very thankful that you chose this session. We know that you had many sessions to choose from. Thank you so much. Um, if you are on Facebook, um, Twitter, or Instagram, feel free to follow uh, me 
I would love to learn alongside. I'm always learning from people in our world and I would love to continue this conversation with you today. So that information is there. Also, um, there are resources available on my website that we weren't able to obviously get to today. But um, yeah, can you send me email to questions for the book to write? Absolutely, yeah. If you wanna send me um, a private message, I would be happy to email anything that you need. So if you'll, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for the email. I will be happy to send that out to you. No problem, Ms. Kayla. Thank you so much again for participating today. Thank you so much. All right, well, feel free to go ahead and log out when you're ready. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and enjoy exploring the world together with your students or your family and your community. Thank you so much. <laughs>